my goodness. Whoa. Is that, that not beautiful? Fun. Yeah. Yes, Does because that, I thought of that. I, anything with a cat. Anything with a cat. But, you know, he's always so gosh darn optimistic. That, of course, yeah. was the kiffness. Yeah. Awaken the universe. And he takes the messages of the animals so seriously. I know, as we should. Yeah. So how have you been? How was your week? I'm doing just great. Uh, just working hard on a lot of different projects right now. But that's where I'm, my, where I'm at my happiest, where I'm being creative. How about you? What have you been up to? Good. I'm just here uh, keeping the seat warm for all of you. Thank you, everyone who's joining us today for Awesome Taco Tuesdays. This is our get together. We get together at 5 p.m. every Tuesday come <laughs> rain or shine or even when, gosh darn it, Starlink comes crashing down. You yeah. do our best to be here, 5 p.m. Tuesday, yeah. Pacific Standard Time. We make it here. This is public therapy for us. For those of you who are like, what the heck am I doing? How did I get here? How do I get out of here? This is our, we do this. We do this because we need to do this, don't we? Yeah, we do. We do. That's now, Good therapy for me. Now, we're going to get back to it because uh, we got a, a busy, busy show, as you all know. But uh, I, we got this running in the background for those of you who need us to hold your hand through this process. Uh, but the uh, polls are closing, I think, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time in Virginia. Uh, yeah, well, I think they already declared Trump the winner in Virginia. I got a news bulletin. On really? My phone. Okay. Yeah. So uh, we'll just keep uh, track of everything. Um, yeah, because, uh, you know, the, the, the news media was more or less predicting Trump was just going to seal the nomination today. Clean sweep. And I think it's going to be interesting to see what Nikki Haley does, because she said she would hold out until Super Tuesday. Uh, what do you feel about that, Whimsy? You know, because you've had some very interesting predictions about Nick. I thought that he would be removed from the ballot, and uh, and wow. that it would not it'd be impossible for him to win. I didn't expect the Supreme Court. Oh, to you know something. I, I he wasn't was... charged. He wasn't charged with insurrection. I know. He wasn't charged with anything having to do, and so it kind of tied the hands. It, uh, the truth of the matter is people are, are blaming Merrick Garland because he should have had charges by now. Yes. And what did, well, you know, I, I was as disappointed as I was. I can't say I was surprised by the Supreme Court's actions, uh, but they basically gave Trump two major victories. You know, they, they you know, with, uh, you know, his being able to stay on the ballot and also the fact that they pretty much have delayed his trials. And, you know, it. I was reading somewhere in the news that it may not even happen until a after the election. And of course we know what could happen if Trump were to be elected, that it would be the end of all of it. Well, we've got, like I said, a ton to get through. If you haven't had a chance to get through yet, oh, I gotta turn this on. Yeah. Uh, if you haven't had a chance uh, to do so yet, it would be great if you could like and subscribe. I'm just going to switch it over so that I can actually see what's going on here. And then yeah. this um, and then get a chance to say hi to everybody that could uh, join us today. Um, starting with Donald Lampert. Thank you so much for yeah. being a member. Chris Crowdis is in the house. Joel Tilson, of Andy course. Keller. Yes, our floor director. Evans. Um, you got anyone else there for us, Chuck? Uh, uh, let me see here. I'm looking through, scrolling through the names here. Let's see who you didn't mention. Wendy, Pam, Pat. Uh, oh, Pam, Pomona remembers. Hello, my, my good friend. Um, Jill. I, I mean, it's just, it's just a collective family, Whimsy. Yes, I, I, it's a lot of great people here. Like I said, thank you to Joel Tilson. He's our floor director. If you have any trouble uh, with uh, getting your questions across, uh, please let us know. Joanna Carson, she is also let us know where you're coming from, what you're eating and drinking for Taco Tuesday. And if you had a chance to get to the polls, what'd you see in your pool? Did you see anything wild? What's the what's the word on the street? It looks like Joanna Carson voted in Texas yeah, today. The GOP came out in full force. Guess they're getting scared. Yep, as scared. they should be. <laughs> um, so, Ohio. 
Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay. Um, okay, so I think what we're going to go ahead and do, also I just want to remind people we have a book of the month club. Be sure and check out Victims and Survivors by Leslie Kane. That is our book of the month. Victims and Surpri Survivors, A Journey from Dysfunction Junction. Uh, it's uh, the skills that survivors need so you don't have to stay a victim. I love that. Anything that can I'm looking forward to reading this. Victims of Violent Crime. Uh, you have a right to say you were a victim. Let's yes. not uh, trivialize what happened to, to us, right? Uh, exactly. If you were the victim of a violent crime. Uh, but that doesn't mean, but you aren't doing more, like to, uh, to encourage us to be survivors. So Leslie Kane, hopefully we can also have uh, do an interview, Chuck. I look forward I'm to looking forward to that very much. I haven't got my copy of the book yet. I should have I it. I have not sent you your copy yet. But right. Either Debbie can send you a copy or I can send you a copy. But okay, I'm looking forward to this very much. Yeah, I think it's going to give us some really great skills and we can definitely, uh, I think it's going to give us also a really great, uh, discussion. Anything else we need to mention before we do the impasse prayer? I think maybe we should go forward with the impasse prayer. I'm just looking at the comments here. Um, uh, oh my goodness, Sandy Miller. I'm not sure where you're located, Sandy, but she just said not a person in line at my church polling place. That's terrible. Oh, oh I hate hearing things like that. Voter apathy. Now I've heard yeah. in some cases it has been surprising. I, I don't know the specific states, but I've heard some locations say much bigger turnout than they thought. Right. Uh, Interesting. Yeah, I know here in California, they're saying uh, it may be low turnout. I haven't had a chance to follow that. Well, to I'm voting for Biden. And so I, I do. don't does it does it matter and for us to go? Well, maybe on other issues, but for who the president's going to be. Yeah. I, I mean, it's literally like vote as if your life depends on it. Democracy depends on it. Do you think he'll even be in one piece by November? The guy looks like he's, I mean, I hate to, I don't mean to be disrespectful, but the guy looks like he's a mess. Well, Trump, I mean, he looks like he, he needs some help. He looks like a mess. And it's like, no matter how much trouble the man gets into, whatever is put up against him, he just somehow, somehow it slides off of him. I just don't understand it. It's like the monster, like the Freddy Krueger. I do monster. understand he's it. It's called money. can't kill it, you know? I say I do understand. It's called money, and when you've got money and you can pay lawyers, uh, see. Yeah. But you know, obsess me. He couldn't pay his employees. He can't pay the people no. that did work for him. The, the lawsuits because he sniffed so much. He stole so yeah, much. Stuff. Of course he does. Uh, but but he's a con. Uh, but a he has no trouble with people giving him money to keep him out of prison. Well, it's, it's not that he's Teflon. It's that he's got foreign governments that have a vested interest in it because oh, of yes. because of trade wars the trade war the, the the countries that have been suffering from u.s trade wars you know nafta uh, these are the countries that were putting money into trump's pocket yeah yeah it's keeping him going because I'm assuming he has to be paying his lawyers. You remember for a long time he wasn't. I, I think most lawyers are not stupid. They're not going to work for him unless they get a paid up front, some kind of a guarantee. Yeah, well, I think uh, somebody was talking to one of Trump's young lawyers and they were asked, why the hell are you here? Well, I'm thinking it's going to look good for my portfolio. And the older lawyer said, I think you need to, don't really understand how these things work yes. <laughs> should probably quit and get out of town and <laughs> could be like ruining any future chances you have in dc yeah i mean yeah. <laughs> it's like you're in dc and you're working for trump and you're probably not going to get paid and you're young yeah. your attorney and you think this is going to give you a what a future uh, yeah, oh, in the future just may not be the one you're counting on, you know? Yeah, I mean, well, they all go to jail. I mean, let's keep yeah. it here, people. I mean, yeah. let's come on. We got to do the impasse. Yeah, we, we could we go do. to the dark side pretty quickly if we don't, you know? know. All right, let's, okay. All right. all right. I want to call on white light protection for myself and this community as we ask permission from spirit to access the Akashic records. We call on our spirit guides and our good angels to be with us. Please give us the clarity and the wisdom that is needed to empower all of us on our journeys, to make the best decisions for ourselves, our families, the planet, the people we love, but also to help those that we may have strife with. And together collectively we say, 
Amen. Amen. All right. That was some good energy. Nice energy. Very good. So how's the art been treating you, buddy? How's oh, the Oh, well. I, 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 entertain us. You got any art for us today that we could start with before we get into the whole pop? Okay. We'll start with that. I, you know, I... Sometimes I forget what I've shown, what I haven't shown, but I just reach into my storage bins and sometimes just pull something out at random. There was a project I was working on a while back. Uh, I had this idea during the pandemic lockdown to do portraits of star Hollywood starlets that were forgotten about or never quite made it to the A-list or met early demise. And there was a silent oh, screen oh. actress. Oh, named my Nicole. God. Thank you. She was a silent screen actress named Barbara, Barbara Lamar. She died at the age of 29. And the reason she died was excessive living. She was someone who let her movie stardom go to her head. She got heavily into cocaine, alcohol, drugs, partying. Uh, she bragged that she was getting two hours of sleep a night and she died of tuberculosis at 29. As you can see, she was I don't think she minded though. <laughs> she looked like she was enjoying her life. She was sure as it was. She was Who cares? But that was her story. And I just found <laughs> this portrait and I thought, oh, what the heck? I'll pull this one out today. You know, I think this was from, I did this from a black and white photo uh, around 1925. And of course, I did her in beautiful colors and tried to capture. The energy of her aura. I mean, like in a way. I mean, like TB was so common back then. Yeah. Isn't it better that she lived? Like, I mean, she just lived. She she, is, she looks like somebody who just like she she spent a lot of time in her bed. <laughs> yes. I I mean, I did a little brush up research on her before the show, and I thought, well, the woman sounded like she was having a good time. <laughs> just the time ran out kind of quickly. But anyway, that was the background behind the portrait, you know, when I was doing these starlets, and I thought it'd be fun to include silent screen stars also in there, because many of them are forgotten about. With maybe a Is handful. this going to be a coffee table book? Or are you eventually putting a book? Well, out? I don't know what it would ever be, because full color publishing is so expensive to do. You know, most publishers don't want to take on. I wonder if you could do it online. I wonder if you could do it online. Maybe that's, I probably have to do it like a digital thing. You know, yeah, it would be a very interesting project. And then maybe the profits could go into eventually, um, but unless you get a, a, someone to, to take it up. It's, it's a nice idea. It's a beautiful piece of work. And I like how you did this like aura around her. Well, thank you. Thank you. I'm glad you noticed the aura because I was energetically drawn to that. You know, that's one of the things I love to do when I do portraits is feel the energy of the person's soul and try to just get out of my own head. And sometimes that means going here and just picking colors that I would never consciously choose, like putting the yellow around her hair like that. I don't know. That was just an energetic thing. Like spirit was telling me to do that. She was like a lion. I yeah. mean, you've also given her a mane like a lion. Oh, she was quite, a, from what I understand, she was quite a forceful, dominant, leading lady on the silent screen. I read a lot of her movies don't survive anymore. You know, that's the fate of a lot of silent movies. I think something like 90% of them are gone forever because of nitrate film. It yes, was they, be, they open them and they would decompose. And yeah, exactly. Them. Nitrate was extremely unstable. It was also very flammable. Do you know there were a lot of movie theaters that burned down because of nitrate film? Well, isn't that how Inglorious Bastards ends? Everything goes, it, they all melt? Yes, it is. Yeah. That's right. I forgot all about that. That is such it's a, a good great ending. ending. It's like the revenge yeah. we all wanted that we we have, we fantasized in our minds, you know. Just, yes. Oh, thank you. Someone said that. Oh yeah. No, I forgot how much I loved that movie. And you know, Quentin Tarantino. I did you ever meet him when he used to come into Earth Bar? Probably. I don't know. I, I, I never pay attention to those. Oh, things. great oh, guy. I, I just always love talking to him. Great movie lover. He owns a movie theater here called the Vista. You, did you ever hear of that, Whimsy? I heard something about him. It was going to close down, and he he's one of the people that no. kept it open, right? The Vista is a movie theater over 100 years old, going back to the silent era, and it fell on hard times. At one point, it was even a porno theater. And that sounds interesting. Yeah, that happens a lot of those old theaters. Not my cup of tea, but who no, am I? But uh, he bought the theater with his own, own funds, fully restored the movie 
theater back to its glory, the way it looked in the 20s, state-of-the-art projection equipment, just a pure labor of love. He did this maybe three months ago. It just, it just reopened. Wow. And someone was asking if this is Elizabeth Taylor. No, it's a silent screen actress named Barbara Lamar. Wow. So I love Elizabeth Taylor very much. Well, it looks like, I don't know if you saw this, I um, I sent you uh, a bunch of stuff. I don't even know. Oh, where to, you I, sent me a lot of stuff. I do. I sent you anything and everything I could oh, think yeah. of. But um, let's start with uh, the, the, the one I sent you from the Herald. The Herald. And which one was that, please? The uh, Herald. I there were all so things. many things you sent me. You started sending them like 11 o'clock last night. Well, well because I knew do. how much stuff was coming in. You guys sent a lot of stuff. By the way, yeah. thank you to I'm everyone who sends the emails and everything else. Well, it looks like poor Mr. Trump is in trouble again. This oh. time, I know. Under fraudulent yeah. statements he made <laughs> to Scottish authorities. Yeah. Oh, I, I mean, Whimsy, aren't you just shocked? Well, it was just we all... the first question I got. I woke up and had a nice cup of coffee. Uh, when did I wake I Did I wake you at three in the morning? I'm sorry. Me? You know, I have my first, I wake up usually around three in the morning. Oh, okay, good. You slept through me sending you stuff. But anyway. Oh, no. This actually the first thing I, well, this was the first thing I got this morning. So that was nice. Yeah. Uh, with, with my coffee, yes. Uh, so evidently, you know how when I've done remote views, I always feel like Trump is broke, Trump is broke, Trump is yes. broke. Yes. So people want to know if we can do some blitzes about what will be the consequences of the investigations that are taking place. Scotland Yard, great and Britain over him falsifying information about the properties. Also, the properties are losing close to, to a few hundred million. I, I, I mean, are losing millions every year. It says that he valued it, Scottish Gulf properties by up, he uh, overvalued it by 200 million pounds. Oh. The U.S. found that it had been wrongly stated that 2,500 homes had already been built. Uh, uh, he was trying to take credit for things. Anyway, he's under investigation. Yeah. What is so, he under investigation for? <laughs> right, I think the first question that's coming to us has to do with the probe out of Scotland and what will be the consequences. Great question, by the way. Thank you to the people who sent it. Yeah. Just shuffling my cards here. Oh, wow. I had three cards jump out. Okay. <laughs> do you want me to tell you? Yes, please do. Uh, the first two cards, well, these aren't such a surprise. I got despair and shame. And then I got priorities. Hmm. Yeah, priorities, in which, you know, he is having to face priorities right now. Uh, you know, like, you know, is, is he going to have to sell his properties like a, at a fire sale to just to meet his bail? You know, not his bail, his his bond was it? He has to doesn't he have to post a four hundred million dollar bond. Yeah. Uh, are you talking about in Britain or are you talking about the United States? Oh, no, I'm talking about the United States. But I'm just over talking 400 million. But for this, he fraudulently inflated the valuations of non-existent oh, yeah. Scottish Gulf Club properties by up to 200 euro, it said. Oh, I know. The judge found it had been wrongfully stated that 2,500 homes had already been built. So, yeah. it, that, so that's what happened there. So what I get is really kind of interesting. For starters, he has to go back and could be under some kind of investigation where he has he's going to be deposed. There's a ship. Yeah. So he has to go there to face further charges in Britain. Yeah. Yeah, that I knew. The stars are, are bad for this guy. By the way, his karma, look at this. He takes a ship over there. He takes a trip over to face yeah. the situation. As for the stars, the calla lilies of death. Whoa. And buy the book, no, sir, buy the book, no, sir. You know, that's very British. It's buy the yeah. book. Well, then maybe that's what you mean by priorities here. Yes. His, priorities. 
but yes. definitely shame, despair. These two just jumped right out. Right. So basically what the cards are saying is he will have to return and the con and the ruling will be the death of his companies. And it's due to violations. of he violated certain things. They're going to go by the book there. He doesn't have the protection uh, Trump. I don't think he has. Oh, hi, Debbie. Debbie's here now. Debbie Brady in the house. Hello. Um, but he doesn't have the protection in Britain, I don't think. Oh, no. How would he? How would he? You know, foreign yeah. jurisdiction there. That's no surprise. But, I, you know, I was just thinking, you know, originally I thought with priorities, the man is he's just running in so many directions right now. And just off the bat, he's facing financial ruin having to liquidate his prop may have to liquidate his properties. You know, I, that's why I was thinking maybe that was tied in with this also. And then of course he's over inflating his properties abroad. Mm -hmm. Certainly done that here as we know. Right. And then you have people like Conway now is pretty, he's pretty upset. You know, he's, he's been on a rampage about uh, Kellyanne Conway's ex-husband, you know, have yeah. you seen some of the stuff he's been going on about? What has been going on with these? Well, he's arguing that they are um, that they're frightened. You know that basically. Uh, oh, so I want to dig into all of that—the timing of the Supreme Court, because a lot of us can't figure that out. Yeah. But we were just talking about the ruling today, and you tweeted today: it doesn't even profess to be interpreting the text. It doesn't, and and I think that's a you know I. I uh, Professor Eiffel said that there was a lot of overreach in the majority opinion. I think the problem here is that all nine justices underreached. They simply decided that they weren't going to apply the Constitution the way you normally apply it, which is you read the text and you, you, you try to figure out what it means in the context of the history and you apply it. And the plain text of the constitutional provision here says that Donald Trump is disqualified. And so, I, you know, that, that's, that was the real problem with, 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 with today. Do you agree, disagree? Uh, I'd like to hear what the audience, what you think. Yeah, I'd love to hear what the audience has to say on this. I mean, I was, you know, as I said earlier, I was so disappointed, but I wasn't shocked by what the Supreme Court did, you know, with the, especially with the conservative majority, uh, three appointments from Trump. It just seems like as much as they're trying to not be political, they, they consistently are siding with Trump. They gave him two big victories today. The fact that it was nine to zero, so yeah, surprised me. Surprised me a lot. At the same time, I guess what I want to know from the audience is, um, I get. I, I'm just. Do you think that if you were to look at the situation objectively, the fact that he had, yeah, the fact that it was nine to zero, Debbie. Yeah, yeah that was shocking. Do you think it's because he wasn't charged? Do you think that they had no choice because the guy hasn't been charged? Do you think that that was the ultimate issue? That might have been part of it, but I mean, it's just, it's, I, I don't know what the motive was with the, the three liberal justices, why it was a clean majority like that. They were definitely sending a, a statement, a but it seems like they went further than they needed to. You know, it, it's so broad reaching what they've done, you know, saying, uh, you know, the, you know, a person, you know, what was it, what was it, the, the third, third part, section three of the 14th amendment about anyone who's taken an oath to protect the constitution, instigating an insurrection. This basically, it goes beyond Trump. It means anyone, anyone who's instigated that kind of behavior can still be on a ballot and run for office. Um, not, not if they've been charged, right? Wasn't the issue that what what has he been charged we know he's faced he's facing 91 charges for example hiding classified documents yeah. in florida um uh in new york with chukin because uh of the stormy daniels i take it right yeah. then he's lost with the civil case uh, uh, uh with uh stormy daniels right and then he also uh, wait a minute no, that one hasn't happened yet. Yeah. Hasn't that that's going to trial. He lost no. a, a, for the Trump organization. It's interesting because when I did a remote on the Trump organization, people had me follow the energy and I heard myself say uh the Trump organization is no more and it really felt like the Trump organization was no more. 
you know. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a question from Wendy Burt. Hi, Wendy. She says, who and how much were they paid off? So mm -hmm. this goes back to this whole idea of, you know, how uh, if uh, federal agents and federal employees complaining that they haven't been paid, the fact that uh, salaries are cut, et cetera, does this make people vulnerable to being seduced by the dark side? For example, the guy that took a quarter of a million from Deripaska out of New York, the FBI guy. What do you think? Well, I don't know. I'm just reading. I'm just looking at some of these comments here. Uh, like it, it had to be nine to zero. There's no, this is from Tina White. There's no way they could allow states to remove candidates from the ballots. If it had passed, all the red states could have removed Biden and would have tied it all up in courts. That's interesting. I'm, I'm just reading all this here. I'm. Yeah, exactly. They could have retaliated. And also, uh, it, it, there was, uh, it's not like the guy had charges. That's the problem, I think. Yeah. That is, um, you know. Yeah, it's, so, it's just astounding so, he has not been charged after three years. You know, I want to go back to what Wendy's saying because she's bringing up a really important point, and then she says perks. You look at what's going on, not just with so many people that every you know it seems like every other Tuesday a member of Congress or somebody that's working for the feds has taken a bribe or been caught doing something. I don't know if people read the DOJ press releases, but uh, what kind of perks do you think? I mean. Uh, it seems to me like these people get into debt a lot, don't you think, Chuck? Oh, yes, definitely overextending over and over. Well, so why don't we go ahead and just check and see if anyone's going to pay Trump's bill. You want to check that out next? Okay. What? Ha it's uh, half a billion? Half a billion? Yeah, he owes half a billion. Well, you were saying how uh, you know a lot of foreign money is coming in to take care of him. That like half a billion? Yeah, I guess to get him out of this, if you want, can you imagine that there, I can't believe that their guy has, is facing 91 federal I know. It It's astounding. That just blows my mind. I, I think it does all of us. But half a billion. So the question is, will, a general question, will someone, that's how I should phrase it, will someone bail Trump out for his half billion? Should I? Um, maybe it's the ambiguity of the question. I don't know, but I'm getting a no, just what I'm getting on the pendulum here, as I phrased it that way. I think somebody could um, back his uh, back his money. Uh, you know, like um, there's thieves attempting to steal like steal an election, right? Yeah. Then, but this guy's got the good luck. Moon, a letter yeah, comes, and then the fish of commerce, protection of commerce. They could theoretically, I mean, that's not a lot of money if you're if you're a foreign government. Exactly. If you, you want him in office badly enough. That's what I was thinking. I When I was asking the pendulum, I was worried that that was too ambiguous, you know, to say a specific amount, like half a billion so, and the word somebody, because somebody could mean any, anything. So I, I tend to trust what you got more with your cards there. Mm -hmm. I I just don't believe this is going to be bad. And I'll tell you why. Okay, hold on a second. And that is because I think that the West is rising and the East is falling. And I think that we are going to win this war. And I would not be surprised if NATO came came into Ukraine. Yeah. You know, um, take a look at this. I just want to show this film footage. It's a couple minutes long of what is going on out of China. I've yeah. talked about this extensively. And I'd really love to get people's opinions. But take a look at this film footage. I'm out of China this year. Before you play it. Right. I would go hazard a guess that you've probably seen channels that would do something of this ilk and it has nothing to do with it. Mm. It's like just pure clickbait. This sure. is the opposite of clickbait. We're going to show you exactly what is in the title right now. Yeah, exactly. Now, bear in mind, this is the original audio from it as well. Okay. Okay, I'll just get us out of here, okay? And let's uh, play the little clip for everybody. <laughs>
sorry. <laughs> it zooms. Wow. So <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Seems metaphorical, doesn't it? Uh, yes. Gangsu Han. Gangsu. What do they call it? Gangsu Han is on fire. Yeah. The fires. Uh, uh, the droughts. So much of the country is on fire. Yeah. Um, Reminds me of Australia. They're in a lot of trouble over in China. But uh, it's interesting because it's, it's, it's so dystopian that literally China is burning to the ground. Yeah. But you have these groups of senior citizen women. And I've been to China and they are fearless. And they're always out exercising in large groups and <laughs> pushing other people around. <laughs> and uh, the fearlessness of the Chinese grannies and they police neighborhoods and- uh, oh, The Chinese uh, grannies. <laughs> yes, they're all, and the police are afraid of them because you know you gotta respect your, your grandmothers in Chinese culture. So the people who have the real power in China, the joke is, is the Chinese mm. grandmas. So, yeah. uh, but uh, physical fitness, uh, public displays of physical fitness are a big part of Chinese culture. And uh, so you'll often see seniors in parks exercising together. And I've seen, I got to see that when I was in China. So by that. Um, well, the Chinese gosh, they're, they're gonna get out there. <laughs> yeah, they're going to get out there and they're going to do their uh, dancing exercises. Yeah. And the other thing that's really kind of surreal is that it's always techno music. <laughs> No. So it's just very dystopian. It's all these seniors dancing to techno music while the world around them is burning yeah, well, smoke. I'm thinking, what was that? D Disco Inferno or Burn Baby Burn? I'm thinking, why am I thinking <laughs> stuff like that? Maybe that's in bad taste to say that. But, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. So it's weird because, you know, I was watching it. And I, I, I'm so empathetic and I can be so easily manipulated that yeah. if I were in that situation and I was hearing the tech, 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 tech yeah. I would be, I would just start walking towards the grannies. I, I'm 60, yeah. can I join you? And I would probably just join no. the dystopian dance waiting for the world to end. I would just, I mean... You're, bi you're, you're blinking. You're blinking. I'm so sorry. I'm trying to stop it here. And, but uh, Someone loves you very much. Yeah. So I guess my feeling, you know, uh, we're going to be okay. They're not so doing so good, but we are doing okay. Yeah. So I guess my question to you, and I guess uh, given how dreadful the film footage is coming out, um, what do you think the future of China is? Do you think oh. it's going to, because I don't think it can survive as a unified party, I, as a unified country. I think they're going to have to start uh, saving, saving what they can save and giving some autonomy to areas that it, it's not financially beneficial for them to hold on to yeah. or to have such a tight squeeze with. Yeah, you feel like they're on the verge of a big collapse. I do very much so. Uh, but uh, uh, did that look optimistic? That film footage? I don't know. Well, yeah, yeah that's why I said at the beginning that the fires just seem like a metaphor for what's going on. But then the, you've got the people dancing in defiance and the, the indomitable human spirit. Um, I guess that you could look at that. Yeah, indomitable. Yeah. I don't know. That's the first thought I had. Or the spirit of Dante. It could be yeah. the spirit of Dante's Inferno. Yeah, that's, I, that's right. Like one of those ceremonies almost, like worshiping yes. the fire goddess or something. Yes, yes. But I thought that was also intriguing what you said about the Chinese matriarchy being respected so much. Elderly yeah. women. Like, yeah, I, I'm happy to hear that actually. Yeah, there's just something they are. They are fearless and all powerful. You don't say no to no to the Chinese the women, but I'm okay. So let's take a look at China's future and see what the cards show. Let me shuffle these cards here. I had to jump out mm -hmm. uh, survival and loss 
Mm, yeah. And then there was a third one here that dropped out. Shame. Shame. But I, I think survival loss, uh, I, to me, that does seem to sum up what's going on right now. This is about their survival. And there could be a huge loss, as you were saying earlier. You know, it's interesting. I feel like young people will save China. You know, young, new, innovative ideas and new creative ways to get them out of this. You have the dog, you have the loyalty, you have this beautiful young energy and loyalty. And then you have this letter and then you have the man who looks for solutions. And then you have the garden of youth. And I just feel that China is going to have to look towards new ways. And, and there's also this feeling like seniors are sabotaging new generations or new ways of doing things in China, like the snake. But it just feels to me like a new energy is a new young energy is coming to China that's not so restrictive. And that ultimately, it would be better for China long term, just in terms of trade. I think once they start producing lab meat, yeah. uh, then a lot of environmental problems uh, are going to come to to an end. I uh, did you have anything else you wanted to add to that? Well, I was just thinking, you know, things. when you mentioned the Chinese, assuming you mean the Chinese youth saving yeah. the country, I was thinking we've got some highly intelligent, extremely well educated people in China as far as youth goes. So I think that makes a lot of sense to me. You know, I would imagine they would tend to be more progressive in their thinking as well. They, they look at the old ways not working, see things maybe more objectively. Mm hmm the older citizens yeah so you could argue that some of this is coming from you know certainly the conservatives in canada are pushing this agenda where they don't want people uh they want to be able to say uh that somehow link this uh this help of china with say the policies uh, of uh Liberals made in a lab. Look, there's a, a big thing with the scientists in the UK has just situation. released a report which says there's a smoking gun to say pretty much that it was made in a lab. Um, but this is very disturbing, and I'm just going to play the clip and we'll discuss it a bit afterwards. Okay, please take a look. This is straight out of Canada. The termination of the employment of two scientists. After years of questions and political wrangling, the moment of truth. Documents released detailing why Jian Go Chu and her husband Keating Cheng were fired from the National Microbiology Lab in Winnipeg. They weren't disclosing information, they weren't disclosing relationships, um, that the nature of other work that they were conducting wasn't being disclosed. Good morning. Chu was part of an award-winning team that developed Canada's Ebola vaccine. Now, intelligence assessments also show she and her husband shared infectious viruses and scientific research with China, had a close and clandestine relationship with Chinese officials, and were considered a credible threat to Canada's economic security. Okay. We went through this together. You know, we did a little game theory, right, audience? And in the game theory, we were using HCRV. We talked about the Wuhan lab, and I was asked to remote view the woman who headed the lab. And when I went into the remote and I was asked if we had an accidental leak, uh, leak from Wuhan lab, I said, as the head of the lab, this is not possible that we have an accidental leak because I know as the head scientist that we do everything in our power. To yeah. It's not possible. It's not possible that we had an accidental leak. Oh, so the, uh, the leak was not accidental. It was an intentional leak. That's what I was say. Intentionally took it out, which means whoever patient zero is, you're the spy that was stealing genetic material out of the Wuhan lab. So we have two people uh, out of Canada that were fired because they were stealing genetic material out of the Canada lab. And now we think the same thing was going on in Wuhan. Yeah. And that was how it became an environmental catastrophe it's or bio bioterrorism is what they're calling it. Right. Remember, we were told that story about it was somebody who ate a bat in a Chinese market. <laughs> Remember that? that? That was the theory of where COVID began. It was a mutation of two viruses that joined together. It made no sense. I know, but that was the story. I remember that. They, they claimed it was this bat that had the COVID virus and, <laughs> and that's how it spread. And that was so, so improbable. 
Well, it also makes me feel like now that we know this, and now that we know that the likely cause was some spy trying to take genetic material out, yeah, it explains also just why China, every, every, it's that, it's every, so many things led to the collapse of trade between the West and China. It, the environmental catastrophe of producing products that um, are in <laughs> extremely dirty ways that are, are disastrous for the environment, yeah. but also what they're doing in terms of uh, just not adequately protecting the lab from, from what happened. Yeah. Isn't this what Trump was actually claiming? What Remember, he was calling it the China virus? Well, he was right. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, I mean, yeah. Trump was actually right about something. Even the clock is right, right? Twice we're, a day. We're, we're saying that. Trump was right about something, but yeah. yeah. Well, um, to switch gears a little yeah. bit, because I know, I know, I know my audience, you know, I know you people, and don't I always try to make you all happy? But anyway, <laughs> yes. um, I think we just need to talk about what's really going down here. Kate Middleton supposedly oh, yeah. spied in a car, but can we believe it is truly Kate Middleton. Mm -hmm. oh, or yeah. are we looking at somebody potentially who just looks like Kate Middleton? Yeah. Remember I brought that up before the show that there, there were rumors that Melania Trump was doing that for a while. She was having doubles appear in different places so she wouldn't have to go out. So yeah. I mean, like double for Kate. some people are saying, well, of course it's Kate. People are saying, of course it isn't Kate. Um, and of course she and her sister Pippa look so much alike. Yeah. That so, could be all it is. You know, I think it might be Pippa. You know, my first, my first thought is that it's the mother and Pippa going to visit, uh, Kate, uh, Kate to see how she's doing. Maybe they spend an hour or two with her and then they drive out. And then because she looks so much like her sister, yeah. they thought it was her. But I guess the mole, they say the mole wasn't there, that, that they were looking for a mole, and uh, I guess they didn't see the mole. Yeah, I'm just looking there. I, I would imagine they would have to have super sharp high also definition. the lips, this, this, the lips and nose, this part here looks yeah. to me like Pippa. This is Pippa's mouth. Yeah, yeah. And this is Pippa's nose. Yeah. So I think it's Pippa, and I think they're just coming back <laughs> to visit their sister. Yeah. And, uh, but uh, there's, but, uh, there's a number of reasons why I don't think it's her. For yeah. Sure, yeah. I, I you, go ahead. No, you don't want a conspiracy. They so want something other than a simple truth that it could be just your sister pulling away in the car, you know, but uh, Colleen asked the question here, uh, has uh, Kate's appearance changed as a result of her recovery? Well, it's possible she could have lost some weight, maybe in her face, so forth. She's been through an ordeal. Yeah, but I think, you know, if you've had abdominal surgery or not, I just, the lip doesn't look right. It looks like Pippa to me. Uh, they are very similar, but the mouth, their mouths are different. Um, and I think that they probably just went to visit her. But if she's had abdominal surgery, like the type that, you, you know, uh, Resectioning, like a lot of the time, the area that's resectioned is the ileocecal valve. If she has a Crohn's disease, that's the area where most like, and they'll usually re remove the appendix as well. It's a very common surgery if you have Crohn's. Yeah. So that will often take a couple of months and then a couple more months before the colostom colostomy bag, the temporary colostomy bag is removed. Yeah. It could be that she wants to, uh, Miss Middleton or however you call her, uh, okay. Princess Kate. Uh, you know, <laughs> I want to wait until the um, the colostomy bag is removed. Well, yes, because, you know, she. we talked about this, I think, last week about how the paparazzi, how relentless they are. They're going to do their best to get a picture of her, an embarrassing picture with the colostomy bag visible under her clothing or something. So maybe that's why she's purposely hiding out. And, but, you know, um, Tina just made an interesting comment here. After such extensive abdominal surgery, riding in a car is painful and exhausting. Yeah, so, I think it's Pippa. 
Uh, because if it was first off the fact that there there's no security around them and that she's just driving down a street with her mom is is a little bit odd considering yes. the high security. Um, good- yeah. So the fact that the palace has not officially come out and said yes, it's Kate. Uh, the fact that it might have been staged with a paparazzi from TMZ, and now that stupid Americans are going to look like they don't know the difference. Uh, but it is not, they have not officially said it's Kate, but uh, I think it's Pippa. And I think I, I, my first hit when I saw it was, oh, it's Pippa and her mom coming back from visiting her at the hospital. She probably has a home hospital. Probably so. Yeah. And I think that she went to stay uh, briefly at some area with, King Charles the Third, and that made complete sense to me because when I put myself in the remote, we would have set up a makeshift hospital and we would have shared a common hospital, yeah. uh, and we would have had two patients, the king and the princess, and we would have had two staff uh, taking care of each patient, but we would have shared a location at a hospital, or they would have put a makeshift hospital in, at uh sam sam how do you say that name um sam, i'm so sorry which sam yeah, sandringham sandringham they yeah. probably set up a, a, a some type of a clinic there and they yeah. were, and both patients were able to be cared for at the same time which is actually a, and that makes a lot of sense to for me security alone well, yeah. security and also it just makes sense you have one hospital set up at, on the grounds for the two patients and the other thing is is they're both recovering together and so you know, they're not alone with just, they can, you know, he can yeah. periodically, I mean, when I put myself in the shoes of those two people, I was upstairs and Kate was downstairs and we shared a clinic. And I was asking how, she, as King Charles, I was asking how she was feeling. So even though we we were not physically together, we were passing messages back and forth. Yeah, and that is how it felt for, for me as the king, and that I certainly wanted her to feel better, and I was asking about her. Yeah, I could be wrong on this, but I think Elizabeth's father, King George, didn't they actually have a makeshift operating room and hospital facility in Buckingham Palace, so he wouldn't have to leave the palace, and they, his health could be kept in secret from the public? Yeah, and I think that. that. I think yeah, and and it makes sense. Uh, I, and and it makes sense, and that's probably what they did at um, at Sam Hendrick or however you pronounce it. Uh, we don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, I, I there was a day when I did know, and then I quickly forgot. But uh, I think that that's what happened, and they and it just would have been really really convenient uh, for both of them. Probably so. Or, I'm sorry, did you have something else you? Oh, I just said probably so. That makes a lot of sense. Everything you just said. Yeah. So. Um, so we got through the Supreme Court. Yeah. We got through the scientist from China. Mm-hmm. We got through Kate Middleton. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think we have to get back to the Super Tuesdays here. Are people yeah. optimistic? Are you like? Uh, do you folks? Uh, let me go ahead and see if I can get us back uh, to where. I gotta get y'all back to where we need to get to. Okay, yeah. uh, here it is. Screen with the running results for the election. Yeah, it looks like uh, we got something going on here. Has won the state of Alabama and its 50 delegates. Uh, this is not a surprise. Uh, the former president has done very well in that state going back to 2016. You can see he got 90% of the vote. We still have some vote out there, but a big number for him, 865 delegates at stake. We always want to remind you guys at home that there's one third of all the voting in the primaries is tonight. Mm-hmm. Donald Trump, look at that number. Allie, 191 delegates so far versus Nikki Haley's three. I know you remember this, Tom, because you yeah. covered former President Trump back in the days of 2015, 2016. Um, and Alabama was one of the first places where he filled a stadium. You remember right. that on the campaign trail? It's a state that has loved him yeah. from the start. And I'm smiling because you remember why he went there. Senator Jeff Sessions, one of his. Oh, my God. No, it's no surprise, but still horrifying. Just the same. I'd love um, to- I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. I wasn't going to say anything. I'm just trying. I'm just thinking out. I was going to say, I, you know, because you have been so optimistic for Nikki Haley in a lot of readings. How do you feel now for Nikki Haley? Well, I was optimistic because I thought some some way he was going to get hooked. You know, yeah. the Supreme Court was going to 
either not it look if he had not been on every single ballot then that would have really taken him out if he had gotten arrested that would have taken him out it, you know if yeah. the, if the supreme court so many things could have taken him out the guy ha has so much it's not luck he has an army of fascist helping him yeah yeah i i mean think about the fact that we have a trial right now going on in the united states yeah. which was instigated by the heritage foundation what is the heritage I'd like to ask the Heritage Foundation, what is your heritage? Because my people have been in America for a long time, so I don't know what their heritage is. They're yeah. spending their money to get Prince Harry expelled back to Britain where he will die because they want to kill him. They, I mean, no. they want to do to him what they did to his mother. They want to take away his security and then force him back. Will be, will he will be hounded to his death because he has nowhere to run and and right. bring him back to us so that we can kill him. Basically, I mean, these people are. I'm sorry, but you're all psychopaths. And I think that his brother. I'm sorry, that head injury he got when he was eight years old, conveniently to the left temporal lobe. And no. I remember what uh, Dean. Uh, Amen, Dr. Dean Amen says about le left temporal lobe head injuries causing this kind of psycho. The guy is a psycho. I think that if William ascends the throne, it's going to be a, a damn national crisis. Well, I th you know, a number have, of intuitives have been seeing the demise of the royal family. I don't, in your own readings, I'm not sure. Entirely what you're latest thing that this latest thing that came out about the fact that William actually paid, hired somebody to terrorize Megan to suicide. I mean, what are you, a freaking psychopath? You are a psychopath. I'm sorry. Yeah, I agree. It's now coming out that it was his courier. He paid the guy. Oh. Uh, torture her, torture her. They torturing her to suicide. You freak. Yeah. And, and they're going to get put him on the throne. And you know how many, you can't have put him in jail. Not only that, but they, they, ha, they have so many people propping them up. Why do they prop up the royals? Because they're, they, they're getting paid. You have these red hats. They're, they're, uh, their income depends on them propping up the royals. So if the royals go, their, their purpose to live goes. So they need that job. And their job is to protect the royals. So it's a, it's a sick symbiotic relationship yes six symbiotic um, relationship definitely says it yeah so we've got time for a couple more blitzes before we close today. here i saw well, in, brady is talking a lot about the nikki haley situation yeah. and i think we should just throw a couple of cards for nikki haley and see if i think that's a good idea but i you know there was also someone asking did anyone watch david muir he said that Michelle Obama said she would run for president if Biden got sick and couldn't run. I didn't hear that, but I did. Well, that's uh, that's what I'm seeing here in the comments. I would, I would think she would not say that because she has no political history. Well, she's also been so adamant in the past that she. Yeah, I think that we need somebody who's experienced in D.C. That's been honestly the best person for the job is. Uh, I never can say her name. Kamala. Kamala Harris, I think, is the best person for the job because she's been sitting there for three plus years yeah. learning the job. So she is the best person to continue. Why do we have to reinvent the wheel? Put the person in there uh, who's been with Biden uh, for the last couple of years. Exactly. It's because they they treat women of color so badly, the Republican Party, they they raped them in public. Well, women in general, they're raping politically. Look what they did to uh, Hillary. But what they're doing to Fanny Willis and uh, I mean, good God, what kind of, who would do that? I mean, the fact that you can legally do that to a prosecutor, what they're doing to, I can't believe that we live in a country where a criminal can harass the prosecutor if they have the money to do so. I can't believe we've fallen that far. <sighs> Very good. Okay, let's finish up. We're going to do a couple more blitzes, and then I guess we'll call it a day. It was a fun show today. It went fast today. Didn't a lot, a lot of material today. Yeah, <laughs> I, I that to me. I knew it was going to be a big show. All right, first one has to do with um, the Heritage Foundation. Will they be successful in uh, forcing Harry to leave the United States? Let's do that. 
will the Heritage Foundation uh, force Harry to leave the United States? I'm getting a no on that one. Strong. What are you getting? They're going to try and break Harry financially. Uh -huh. The next scheme, the next thing the royals are going to do because you don't threaten the, the you, you don't threaten the institution. It's like threatening the Catholic Church. Right. So what they're going to do is is declare economic war on Harry and attempt to crush him financially. Yeah. And it's all coming from Psycho William. You have the lady who comes in to rescue, the sun comes and the garden. So you have this nice rescue, but you also have the tower and the money leaving. They're gonna try they're trying to they're trying to break him financially. All their money goes to security. Right. But I, I gotta know I just asked the question, is he gonna be sent back? Uh -huh. I got a strong no on that. I think he I'm just sensing he will be defiant and hold on. But you're right, what you're saying. Sick. I can see it is sick. The is only sick. reason that, yeah, they want to kill him because he married a black woman. See a Sakai. I mean, you've, the, if the British let William get on the throne, you, you've done this to yourselves. And they've actually been brainwashed into believing you're doing this for tourism. Like what? You think nobody comes to the United States as a tourist because we don't have a royal family? I don't right. I don't go to Britain. I've been to Britain dozens of times. I, go there, I used to live there. there. I didn't, there's not a single time I went there to see the royal family. Ever. Oh, I mean, it's like I didn't have a single appointment with them. But, you know. It's like you got, they're It's like, well, it brings in money. No, we go and we see the Tower of London, whether they're there or not. We're, the Tower of London is still going to be there. It's still, it's still going to be the place where Anne Boleyn got her head chopped off, whether you're around or not. Yeah. We don't need you for anything. No, I, I think the royal family is more like it's like an extension of a a nighttime soap opera like Dynasty or Dallas or something. There's just this odd fascination watching them destroy each other and go at each other's throats. But I think I think the relevancy is dying out. Yeah, I mean, like uh, Joel. Well, let's do a uh, Jack Smith. Do you? Th <laughs> It's two opposite questions. People wanted to know about Jack Smith. I think Jack Smith is going to save the day. That's my feeling because I always get, I always feel like it's not the truth of the matter is everything was handed over to Jack Smith so that um, the DOJ could focus on other things because the DOJ is not focused on that exclusively. That was the impression I got. Okay, so Joel Tilson wants to know, does King Charles know what William is up to? I mean, like, how could he not know? How could he not? Yeah, how could he not? I'm sure he's in on it, probably assisting him. But does that really make sense, given who he and Anne are? I mean, they're the two biggest libs, pot-smoking liberals. I mean, Anne? Anne could not possibly be a part of that. She's the biggest rebel. She was the one that was mm -hmm. forced Robert Kennedy. Then she, she she went to a protest, and I think she almost got arrested. She went to a thing where she openly endorsed Robert Kennedy. I think there was something like that that came out of her. There's a lot of stuff that was hush-hushed about her, but she was very politically left. So, you you know, how, how in the world they got Anne to shut up is beyond me. That, <laughs> I mean, um, uh, Boys. What? I'm sure they have their ways. <laughs> well, it goes back to what Prince Charles has said. You ch boys are going to be the death of me. He's heartbroken by it. Yeah. Uh, he's also a traditionalist. So, the you know, it's, he's, if he's got to pick between two sons, well, William is the head. It's, it's like he abdicates a lot of power to William, and I have a problem with that. The, the Kyle of Lilies of death, he's confused. He's trying to take care of his own health. There's a fox around him. I think that William is a very cocky, you know, that it's looking like cutting Harry out. Uh, he's going to have to cut somebody out, Sky. Yeah. You know, it goes back also to the remote where William had said to me, like in the remote, he had said, if you publish that book, you're no longer a member of this family. And that's pretty much what happened. William said it and then he carried it. The book was unprecedented. I don't think there's ever been a member of the royal family to write a book like that. Or to what to even write a book? Period. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was. Oh. What a show today! What a show! What a yes, show! What a show! We went in some directions. I don't think either of us thought it was going to go. 
but um yeah, yeah I, so someone's here saying i'm not into the royal family well you know i used to have a roommate who was British, he detested the royal family. You know, he still was a British citizen. He was just here on a green card. And he said he still resented any of his family's tax dollars going to support that family. You know, uh, your money should go to giving your, your family a good life and not, um, uh, you know, it's it's uh, yeah. it, it's like they, 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 they've been brainwashed into believing that they have to be enslaved by this. Yeah. And uh, it's just the most absurd. And, and also, it, it's not healthy for either. I mean, look at what happened to uh, Thomas Kingston taking his own life. I mean, uh, the pressure to be something that no, nobody really is that perfect. It's all just made. Oh, no. Was it? Because wasn't that originally the thinking going back centuries? The royal family was like a form of the of deity, like the closest yeah. thing to God, and that yes, you and you, they believed it, and they like believe God. it, and they believe it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, Harry is getting no money from the crown. No, they cut no him off. He, he had he, money inherited, uh, but uh, it's actually his wife that was buying furniture. She had to buy him his couch. He didn't have a couch. Yeah. I know he got money from yeah. Diana. Everything was for William. Nothing was for the spare. He lived uh, in a basement apartment and uh, somebody threw, he, he got his furniture because people were throwing stuff out just like a college kid. And then his girlfriend bought him a couch. Hmm. You know, then they went to visit William and they saw this beautiful home with all this beautiful stuff. And it was like, wow, look at what you folks got. Sure, it all goes to William. But as for you, you're the spare. You can live in a basement where people are like uh, beating their carpets and the dust would go oh. in his Harry's face. And uh, they put him in the dumpy room and he did, you know, he was, drawing, he was drying his clothes on the heater. He was yeah. hand washing t-shirts and putting it on the heater. Almost like a metaphor and for burning him. The basement, yeah. the dungeon, you know, banished. Yeah, that's what dungeon, actually happened you know? to him. And he was trying to make it on his salary. Uh, he had a clothing salary for events. But other than that, they gave him nothing. Yeah. I'm glad. Right. Got... I mean, it's just unbelievable. All he did was tell the truth. And, and, and now they hate him. He told the truth, right? Yeah. I'm going to have to go. It's already six. You have to go. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, I had a great everybody. time. Be kind to all so that all can be kind to you, too. We yes. will see you if you are a member uh, and you are at the Elders and Empaths level. Woohoo! We're starting class tomorrow. I'm so excited. Yeah. If you're trying to get in for a reading with me, understand that on March 22nd, our prices are going up. Uh, I think at, at least 20 percent because I have not ever raised my prices, have I? No, you haven't. All the years I've worked for you, and I've worked for you close to 10 years now. Yeah, so um, the only person that got raises the last two, you got two raises, so it's time. We have to we have to do this. Um, so March 22nd, like I said, prices go up. So if you want me to honor, you can see me anytime this year, but if you want to get the old price, you should book before the 22nd. Yeah. I think that's all I have for you. Any I love you. And book appointments, you know. Yeah. Do you have anything you need to say before we oh, do yeah, it? Like and subscribe my own channel, Chuck's Captivating Chronicles. Uh, I do a live stream on Mondays at five Pacific, eight Eastern. I have a lot of great videos about old Hollywood on my channel. So that's that for yeah. me. And be sure also to check out my fan pages. Thank you to Debbie Brady, who uh, takes care of our fan pages over at Facebook. And remember that once a month, one of you folks. Uh, get selected to have a free reading with me. Yes. I think that's it. I and this all is fabulous too. You've read for me. <laughs> <laughs> <You're all laughs> Thanks everyone. Thank you, Bye. See you later. Bye-bye. Thank Bye -bye. you so much. Goodbye.